So the Biden campaign is continuing to hit record-setting levels of parity. Let me show you the new thing that they're up to. So this is from Alex Burns of the New York Times, and he says the following. My story today. Dems had just settled on a 2020 message about center-left policies and a return to normalcy when COVID made it obsolete. Now, Biden is promising FDR scale change and Dems from Warner to Warren say the, move, the moment demands deep economic reform. And then you see a quote in here. It's, uh, there is a recognition that this event is more transformative than 2008, more transformative than 9-11 more transformative than the fall of the Berlin Wall, said Senator Mark Warner of Virginia, a centrist Democrat. Now, as a general rule, I want whenever you guys hear the word centrist to describe a Democrat in official channels, just replace it immediately with corporatist, because these are not really ideological centrists or moderates. They're just people who want to do the bidding of their donors and so they do the bidding of their donors, and they cloak those actions um, with an ideological claim. There's an ideological shield there. Uh, who, me? Uh, I mean, listen, yeah, sure, I just voted to deregulate Wall Street, but it's okay, because the reason I did that is not corrupt. The reason I did that is because of my ideology. I'm a centrist. No, you're a corporatist, and you really believe in nothing, and you go along to get along, and you fit right in in Washington, D.C., because everybody takes the path of least resistance, which is doing the bidding of their donors. So that's who Mark Warner is. But, so Joe Biden and his staff and the media, and just so everybody understands, the media is going all in on this front. All in. I've seen multiple headlines, multiple articles talking about how he's the new FDR, bunch of tweets on it, and they're, they're really going with this. I feel like I don't even need to do the rest of the segment because everything I'm going to say is so damn obvious, okay? Biden did everything he could in his power to stop the actual new FDR, Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders was running on a continuation of FDR's legacy. Bernie Sanders is the person who more closely embodies that ideological path of social democracy. That's not Joe Biden. Joe Biden is on the record as being a neoliberal corporatist when you look at his record over the years. I mean, this stuff, it's so obvious. It pains me to say it, but not only that, Biden went out of his way to smear Bernie for, for believing in that ideology. Remember, they start towards the end of the campaign when they were getting really desperate. What did they do? They threw the kitchen sink at Bernie and they were like, oh, look at this guy, man. Fidel Castro lover. He loves Fidel Castro. Loves Fidel Castro. Unacceptable. Not okay. Dictator lover. For the same policies that Biden is now going to pretend to believe in for the rest of the campaign. For those same policies. Medicare for all. Free college. And then they took stuff out of context from like the 1980s. And were like, psh, psh. see? He gave incredibly nuanced tepid, kind comments about Fidel Castro. Therefore, he agrees with everything he ever did. Therefore, he's a communist dictator. Communist dictator Bernie. Now, all of a sudden, in the general election, oh my God, look! Society is collapsing around us. We're entering an economic depression. We have a pandemic. <laughs> who, me, bro? I mean, the person who I most embody more than anybody's like FDR, if you know what I'm saying. That's what, Really? Really, she agree with FDR? Okay. Well, you do know there is something that's on the record that FDR wanted to pursue, but he didn't live long enough to pursue it. You do know that there's a second bill of rights that he was pushing, right? You do understand that, right? Because you're saying you want to embody FDR's, you know, legacy and his ideology, and you want to be the new FDR. Okay, he left the roadmap. So I suspect that Joe Biden is now in favor of every single portion of that Second Bill of Rights, the Economic Bill of Rights, as it's called. Can I mark you down for that, Joe? This is a serious question to Joe Biden and all of his staffers. Somebody send this segment to them and somebody send it to them ASAP. Because if he's being serious about this, okay. Well, great. We have the roadmap. Are you going to do the Second Bill of Rights? Are you going to do the Economic Bill of Rights? You do know what's in that, right? Ideas that are so far to the left of Joe Biden, that again, Joe Biden would scoff at it and call it communist. 
So I'm just sick of it. You know what it is? It There's such rank opportunists. Joe Biden is such a rank opportunist. His staff, they're such rank opportunists that they don't care that they just totally contradicted their entire message on the campaign trail. And they also don't care that they don't mean it when they say it. Obviously, he's not going to be like the next FDR. Now, um, I want to show you this because, I mean, it's just it perfectly... This is just too perfect. I swear to God, this is too perfect. I came across both of these articles on the exact same day. So, the one you just saw about the New York Times saying, well, Biden and his team, now he says, I'm going to do FDR. I'm going to be the new FDR. I'm going to do the FDR style change. I'm going to go, I'm going to go in that direction. The same day I saw that article, I also saw this article. This is from the Washington Post. Donors can now give $620,600 to Biden and the DNC, expanding Democratic big money fundraising. In other words, he's doing what Hillary did. And just so everybody knows, the name of this is the Biden Victory Fund. And what this is, is on paper, it's a fundraising agreement with Biden and I believe 26 of the state Democratic parties. So a big donor can give hundreds of thousands of dollars to Joe, and he's nominally supposed to share it with a bunch of the state parties. Now, Hillary had the same kind of an agreement. She ended up not really sharing the money. So she would, you know, raise money from big donors, and she would just use it all for her campaign. When on paper, it's supposed to be like, oh, I'll share it with the state Democratic parties. This is the same kind of an agreement that Joe Biden just signed. At the same time, he's like, me, bro, I'm the new FDR. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be like FDR. FDR represented the people when it comes to his economic policies. That's what he did. Joe, you can't represent the people if you're bought and owned by billionaires and by corporate interests. And that's exactly what this is. So, I, again, I swear it was the exact same day that I came across both of these articles. Perhaps they weren't released on the same day. They were almost certainly released on this, during the same week. But I came across these almost back-to-back. -back. It was like, oh, I'm going to be like FDR. Anyway, now I'm going to raise $620,600 a pop from wealthy donors. They're so brazen. Like, I almost, I'm almost jealous of the people who don't follow this stuff closely, and so they just might have this default assumption, like, I don't know, obviously Trump's a terrible person, so maybe Biden's good. Like, I'm jealous of the naive people, the ignorant people who don't follow this. Because once you start following this, it's maddening. It really is. A after you follow politics long enough, there was a great quote that, and I don't remember the guy who said it, and I don't remember exactly how he worded it, but it was one of my favorite tweets of all time. And... The dude basically said that before you enter politics, you have this mindset of like, what's the point? They're all corrupt. None of them are working for us anyway. Like, that's the outsider, don't even care about politics, apolitical, never cared about politics. That's that person's mindset, generally speaking. And then you get involved in politics. And then after you're involved in politics long enough, you come right back to that original position. They're not working for us anyway. They're corrupt. What's the point? And that's just so, that's so perfectly describes exactly what I'm feeling and I know many of you are feeling. They're just so shameless. They're just so shameless and they're such liars. And, you know, don't, I don't want anybody to ever get it twisted. Me beating up on Joe Biden, I do it because of what he does. It's not me, it's him. I'm just describing what he's doing and it's unacceptable. But this is in no way, shape or form to excuse Trump because Trump's terrible also. He's horrendous. Okay, one of the reasons I couldn't vote for Obama again, again in 2012 was because his drone strikes were killing civilians. 90% civilians. Well, guess what? Donald Trump increased those drone strikes 432%. And so he's massacring civilians also. He ripped up the Iran deal. He's, you know, um, escalating tensions with Cuba as well. I, I could go on and on. It, the tax bill, the deregulation, I can go on and on with all the problems with Trump. He didn't end the wars. He said he was going to end the wars. He didn't end the wars. So, like, me beating up Biden is not to excuse Trump, because I hate Trump also. But that's the point, is that it's... 
they're all so far from that which is even minimally acceptable. And it drives me crazy. It drives me crazy. Everybody knows you're not going to do FDR scale change. Everybody knows you're not going to do that. You know, if you really wanted to do it, okay, well, let's see a campaign for you pushing for the second Bill of Rights. That's what FDR would have done if he was still around. And you're not going to do that. You're just using it as a branding exercise. The same stuff you just called communist. The same stuff you just pretended like Bernie was sympathetic to dictators. You're now like, oh, I'm just like Bernie. And by the way, I don't want to let Bernie off the hook here either because you know what? The fact that a pandemic hit and an economic depression hit, Bernie was still in the race when that was happening. The fact that you couldn't make crystal clear that, well, oh, obviously now I'm the only option that makes sense, people. Hello? Everything I've been talking about on the campaign trail has now been proven correct. 43 million people are about to lose their health care on top of the 27 million people, 28 million people who already didn't have it. And I'm the only candidate calling for Medicare for All for everybody to get health care. I mean, obviously, even people who didn't like me before, now you like me, now you want me to be president, right? Because I'm the only person that has the vision and the mindset and the ideology and the philosophy to deal with what's happening to us right now. But he didn't do that. Bernie Simi, you know, I would like to maybe be president, but if that means that I have to hit Joe Biden, I will not hit Joe Biden, and I'll call him my friend every 14 seconds, and then maybe I'll just... I'll just go into the background slowly and then push Joe Biden relentlessly, even though he's terrible and he's anathema to everything I believe in. Ah! God damn it, man. 620000 $600. I mean, listen, that's all he's got. That's the only move Biden's got. It's the only move he's got. That's it. It's the only move he's got. Why? He can't raise small dollar uh, donor money. All of his voters are like, you know, professional class, 65-year-old suburbanites. They're not donating 20 bucks a pop to Joe Biden. They go vote for him even though they haven't heard him talk in two and a half years. Oh, everything is so broken. God, I hate it. I hate it all so much. This is what we have. We got Biden or Trump. That's it. That's what we're at right now. How did this happen? In 2016, I was like, oh, wow, at least this is a once in a lifetime event. We're never going to get another election that has two options this terrible. Ha <laughs> ha! Wrong, Kyle. Wrong.